Okay, it's here. I finally bought my dream Rolex. I've been into watches ever since I remember. Even as a kid, my wrist was rarely without one. While I can't recall what specific watches I had, I do remember having something on at all times. Moreover, I grew up watching my granddad wear his classic Oyster date every day. It always fascinated me and sparked the dream of owning my own Rolex someday. When I finished high school, my parents asked me what I would like as a gift, and I said I would like a watch. Which watch? This one. This Citizen Chronograph was my first big boy watch. I remember it cost 10,000 Indian rupees or about 150 US dollars, and at that time, it felt like the most expensive thing ever. And it was my only watch for several years. I really wore the heck out of that thing, as you can tell. But I was not a watch collector by any means, just a guy who liked watches. But since I got into collecting watches more seriously a few years ago, I've been lucky to experience several beautiful watches, including a couple of Rolexes. Some watches have stayed in the collection, while some have been moved on. Throughout this journey, I've always had a dream Rolex that remained elusive. Why elusive? 1. Because it was just too expensive for me. And 2. Because it was just too goddamn hard to get. I've been chasing this watch for over a year, and I've been following up with my sales associate pretty regularly since first registering interest. I wanted the watch for a special milestone, and the AD was aware of it. As the date appeared closer, my patience was running out. As I was making contingency plans, I got the call for it. My favorite Rolex was here, and I was so excited. Now, the watch is here with me. Can you guess which one it is? Drum roll, please. It's the GMT Master 2 BLNR on Jubilee, or more simply, the Bad Girl. As you know, stainless steel sports models from Rolex are, um, let's say, uh, challenging to obtain, even in 2024. And the Bad Girl is one of the hardest of the hard-to-get models, probably only behind the Daytona and Pepsi. So I was prepared for the wait. But to clarify, I was never interested in going grey and paying over retail for this, or any watch for that matter, and I'm glad it worked out. So what was my spend history like at the store? I won't go into too much detail, but I do have decent purchase history with this Rolex AD. Nothing crazy, I'm not a high roller by any means, but enough that most of the employees know me by name. With the boring stuff aside, here's the watch. Isn't it BEA beautiful? BEA beautiful. I just want to start off by acknowledging that I know that Rolex make a million watches a year, and they probably make thousands of GMT Master 2s. This isn't a unique watch by any means. Nor am I claiming it's the best watch at this price. But you know what? It actually might be. I actually think that the GMT Master 2s might be the best sports watches Rolex make. Yeah, I think they're better than the Submariner and the Daytona. You can fight me. In my opinion, the GMT combines the right balance of elegance and sportiness. It's also a historical model going back to the 1950s and one of the most recognizable Rolex designs. The GMT is also one of the most useful complications for me. No, not because I'm a globetrotter, I, I, I wish my life was that exciting, but because I have family living in another part of the world, and the GMT functionality prevents me from calling them at 3 in the morning. Also, if you know me, you know I'm a sucker for blue. So naturally, the blue and black GMT is my favorite. And just look at this watch. It looks so freaking good, especially on the Jubilee. I know, I know, I'm still in the honeymoon phase with the bad girl, so I'm a little biased. Okay, maybe I'm more than a little biased, but can you blame me? But I'm also cognizant that the watch isn't perfect. The GMT Master 2 with its flat, chunky case is on the large side for me and my wrist. Unfortunately, Rolex don't make a smaller GMT. I think a 38mm GMT would be perfect. But Manchester United winning the league again will happen sooner than Rolex releasing a new 38mm GMT. Welp. Moreover, the lugs are still within the bounds of my arm. So although the watch looks a little large, it's not oversized for me. The second drawback with the case is its slab-like profile. I wish the case curved a little more to better contour to the wrist rather than being so flat and boxy. Well, this is the issue with most modern Rolexes with the super case. It is what it is. And after a while, you don't even notice it as much. Plus, the Jubilee bracelet wraps around the arm perfectly and makes the watch feel slightly smaller on the wrist. Despite the dimensions, I love this watch. Due to the colour scheme, this watch works well with most of my regular attire. 
yeah i wear the same old dull colors all the time anyway leaving my questionable tailoring choices aside i like the fact that the blue bezel also isn't very loud and just seamlessly blends in with the black so it can surprisingly go under the radar at times now this watch has been hogging up almost all my wrist time and i've been wearing it everywhere since i got it from the beginning i decided not to baby this watch and wear it like the rugged tool watch it's meant to be in fact i celebrated getting this watch by going to a dog park as you can see the clasp has already picked up plenty of scratches in just a month or so i don't regret anything okay i lied i admit the first few scratches did feel very bad but i'm slowly getting over them another positive i was not expecting was the superb legibility i know this aspect of rolex doesn't get talked about as much but this watch is so easy to read at a glance thanks to the big hands solid hour plots and large bezel font Also with a hefty dose of chroma light or whatever Rolex calls its loom the watch just glows in the dark I was honestly taken aback by how quickly the loom charges and how bright it gets My date just also has good loom but it's nowhere close to the loom on the bad girl The watch is really easy to read at night too even if the loom isn't charged But the main reason I like this watch is because of how special it is to me I leave the melodrama to the Kardashians but the watch truly makes me smile I bought this timepiece to commemorate a special occasion in my life and I wore it on the day. I'll always associate the watch with this moment and it will never leave my collection. I can honestly go on talking about this watch for hours, but at this point I think my fiance suspects I'm having an affair. Unlike her, I hope you liked the video and share my fascination for a silly non-essential piece of jewelry. This is totally normal, right? Now I want to ask you Did you mark a special occasion with a watch purchase or do you have a special memory you associate with a particular watch I would love to hear your stories in the comments If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button I promise you one like will mean you step up 10 positions in the waitlist for your Rolex Okay jokes aside I'm going to make a more in-depth video talking about the BLNR in a month or so when the initial adrenaline has subsided and I can make a less biased review I also have videos featuring some more cool GMTs like the Monta Sky Quest and the Tudor Blackway GMT coming soon. So please consider subscribing. If you want to watch another video from me, check this one out. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.